Hey Shubi Doodlers, how are you doing? If you saw my last video, you'll know that I've recently illustrated this book called Slime, uh, which is for kind of two to five year olds. And it's, uh, it's uh, the story of a theatre production, um, which is done by the Heard Theatre Company. Um, and so obviously we have actors playing Slug and Caterpillar, but I have made it into a book with cartoon characters. And today I'm gonna to show you how to draw caterpillar like so i did lots of illustrating in this book and so i've got to know how to draw these characters quite well and i'm going to show you how to draw now but not it's not just about how to draw them in one way it's how to draw them and kind of animate them you need to be able to draw them from all sorts of different angles uh, and different uh, positions almost as if they're little human beings like actors on a stage and as ever, I like to start drawing in pencil first, drawing very, very gently so you can hardly see uh, what's going on. The more, if you draw really gently, then you can um, uh, erase the pencil lines from underneath when you've done your illustration. So um, I'm gonna want to have one, two, three, kind of four like that, four. And I'm gonna want the eyes like that. And, um, and I'm going to have him with a ta-da kind of expression. And he's got his little backpack on there as well. And, and, and you may have, if you saw the slug video, there was a kind of a twist in the body. And I kind of have that going on here in the caterpillar too. So I'm going to draw two big caterpillar eyes like that. Oh, let's join them up a bit. And the eyeballs are kind of like letter C's, really. And we want to kind of, then I'm going to put the backpack straps in there. And then I can put in the hand there. Um, uh, I had to think about this a little bit. So then we can have the backpack sort of showing around in there. And then we want a kind of a slightly crinkly line like that. And, and then we want these little feet. And I think when I was designing this, I was sort of looking at caterpillars and they kind of have little suckers and things and legs all the way up. But some of them particularly have these kind of four little feet at the back. And that's kind of what really interested me. So now I'm going to do more of this kind of little curly loops like that. And then we can draw the hand like that. And as I say, this is um, kind of performed by the Herd Theatre Company. And they've they were commissioned by um, Hull Central Libraries to, to do this performance that can just kind of sort of slide into spaces like libraries and sort of put on an entertainment for, for young kids. And and it, I, f I found it, what I found really, really interesting watching it. Uh, hang on, I'm just going to dry this. What I found really interesting watching it, and I managed to watch it from the stage side, and I was actually watching the audience <laughs> rather than the uh, performance, well, I was watching the performance too, um, was how it's perfectly suited to under fives in one particular way. Uh, where every time there was a kind of a, an element of uh, make-believe and audience participation, for instance, uh, like having a, a cone of paper completely empty and offering it to the audience as if it was popcorn at a cinema, um, or movie theatre, and the five-year-olds and under would quite happily grab a bit of popcorn, imaginary popcorn, and eat it um, in a very enhanced imaginary kind of way. Uh, whereas six and seven and older children, they would just cringe a little and not kind of be very happy about that. And and so it's obviously got that absolutely right that this sort of make-believe world is 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 really for the under fives. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start by doing a little bit of um, Naples yellow on the tummy. So that we've got a pale tummy. 
and then I can just kind of wet that around there and then I am going to be using Dr Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolour <laughs> and this colour is Chartreuse and I'm using this to get a really good uh, bright radiant colour so you need to really shake this up uh, to get all the particles in the right, you know, sort of mixed up. And I'm going to use a real brush. And I'm using a real brush, which is a Rosemary Designer Series 344. I did a video on Rosemary brushes a while back. You have to be quite careful when using um, Dr. Martins because they're not they don't dry waterproof in in the way that a normal watercolor dries and they will kind of stain and spread into other colors so uh, you need to think of the order that you're painting first so I need to do the eyes first so I'm doing a bit of um, bleed there and I'm just going to drag that down oh drag that down with clean water that was me hitting the light <laughs> uh, like that and then I would get that dry as well so I'm going to drop a little bit more blue in there just to oh it's too much so I wash the brush and just sort of clean it and drag it down a little bit like that that's okay so Okay, so now the blue is dry, and so this um, radiant watercolour is not then going to uh, sort of, I'm trying to think of the word, sort of blend into it, seep. It's uh, the trouble you start painting and all the words go. Um, bleu. It's a blur word, blend. So it's not, it's a more. Hmm. It's a more aggressive word than blend. <laughs> uh, it's going to seep, it's going to flood. And that's probably somewhere like that. It's between seep and flood, I think. So, <laughs> so uh, and then we'll get all these feet painted. And we want a little bit of sort of shininess along the side, like that. And then now I do want it to kind of seep and blend. So I've cleaned the brush and now I'm kind of blending it into this sort of Naples yellow area like that. But then I want to add some more now on the top here because that looks a little bit, it's gone a bit light. And I think we can add a bit more around there. And although it is watercolour, it, it really does work very differently to, <laughs> to watercolour. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, I don't know what it is, it's more of a, a, a dye really, I think. Than, uh, it's a kind of a pigment dye, rather than what we normally call watercolour. Now I'm going to add a bit of watercolour. Just to sort of add the shadows into there, and we're going to want a bit of shadow and a bit of dark around the on the kind of the back and on the ankles and in underneath on those back legs as well. And then I'm just going to draw this very sort of parched ground because that's kind of what the story is all about there's, <laughs> there's nothing left to eat in the garden <laughs> and and then i guess a little bit of neutral in there just to add a bit of shadow like that and you might want to just put a little bit of movement in there like that and and I feel we just need to have a little bit more going on here. So these are like extra 
it's a little blobby bits and I think you can afford to be a little bit blobby to get that kind of caterpillary look and I think we still need a little bit more shadow going on in there oh you see now I didn't let it dry so this is what happens it kind of stains and floods and uh, kind of infests its way yeah. so I'm going to make those darker more shadowed and maybe in there as well I think we probably need that too so that is how you draw caterpillar and click up here to see how to draw slug if you'd like to see more about how I came up with uh, designing the characters come and join me on patreon where I got a few videos on all the whole design process uh, in the meantime keep drawing 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 practice 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 and I'll see you next time you take care now bye bye